So Joe Biden called white supremacy the most lethal terrorist threat to the nation in an op-ed in USA Today. This is commemorating the two-year anniversary of the deadly El Paso shooting. This drives me out of my mind. The shooter, I'm not going to use his name, thought his hatred of immigrants could prove more powerful than the culture of vibrancy of the people of this community, Biden said. He was wrong. Yet America's intelligence community has confirmed what the people of El Paso know all too well, that the most lethal terrorist threat to our homeland in recent years has been domestic terrorism rooted in white supremacy. Now, let me let me just show you how this is unbelievable and been planned for a very long time. After 9-11, what did the press say? What did the Democrats say? They said that it was nothing but white people uh, that were just uh, after Muslims because we were somehow we, we, we viewed ourselves as superior and they were somehow exotic and we wouldn't accept that. Then in 2008, it was white people who cling to their God and their guns. This has been carefully laid. Now you'll notice that the flag now belongs to the Republicans. That's what the Democrats say. That doesn't represent them. That represents the Republican Party. I will tell you, I saw this coming from really 2001. It's why none of my sets, except for the one at my ranch, has an American flag on it or ever would have an American flag on it. It's why I fought with Fox to get the red, white, and blue out of all of my logos because I knew that was going to come to this. I knew as soon as they started taking off their flag lapel pins and saying, you know, I don't have to wear this to be an American, which I agree with, I knew we were headed down this road. This has been carefully, carefully laid And what they're saying when they're saying white supremacists, because I have absolutely no problem, no problem, if Nazis are planning to overthrow the government, I don't want to live in a socialist nation, and that's what Nazis want. I don't want to overthrow the Constitution, and that's what Nazis want. That's what socialists want. That's what anarchists want. That's what Antifa wants. That's what everybody who is actually working to destroy us, that's what they want. White people don't want that. Now, I guess there are some white people that do, but not the vast majority. You have to start translating white people into conservatives. Mm -hmm. That's what this is really all about. The flag is now owned by conservatives. When he says white terrorism, he means conservatives. They are tying uh, terrorism January 6th right directly to white people. And white people equals conservative. This is the plan for, for a very, very long, long time. The Democrats tried to image themselves as black people. Our first black president was Bill Bill Clinton. Clinton. He's not black. What are you talking about? They're all positioning themselves as not really white people because white people doesn't mean white people. It means conservatives. So he said, we cannot ignore it. We have to confront the spread of hate-fueled violence in every form. Really? In every form? I don't think they mean every form. By the way, This guy who murdered 22 people in El Paso, in his manifesto that he posted, he said he was trying to stop the Hispanic invasion of Texas. Now, let's listen to the rest of the manifesto, which he called an inconvenient truth. An inconvenient truth. The decimation of the environment is creating a massive burden for future generations. 
Does that sound like a conservative? Sure doesn't. No, No, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Corporations are heading the destruction of our environment by shamelessly over-harvesting resources. Does that sound like a conservative? Uh, It does not, no. Uh, If we can get rid of enough people, then our way of life will be Mm -hmm. more sustainable. Does that sound like a conservative? (laughs) Nope. No, it doesn't. Who does that sound like? Sounds like environmentalists. Yeah, it sounds like Prince Charles. Mm -hmm. uh, Sounds like all the environmentalists. It sounds like the people who were cheering on coronavirus because it was helping the environment. Right. Um, He also blamed America's consumer culture for environmental damage. Fresh water is being polluted uh, from farming. From farming. And oil drilling operations. Yeah, a lot of conservatives are against oil drilling. Oh, uh, and farming. Right. And farming. And farming. Yeah. Consumer culture is creating thousands of tons of unnecessary plastic waste and electronic mm. waste. Recycling to help slow this down is also almost non-existent. Urban sprawl creates inefficient cities which unnecessarily destroy millions of acres of land. Do you hear conservatives talking about this? This guy is not a conservative. But by saying that it was race-filled hate, and I would agree if you're trying to stop the Hispanic invasion of Texas uh, and you murder 22 people, you might have a problem with people of color. However, I believe that uh, uh, our governor of Texas and many other governors are also trying to stop the invasion of the United States because that's what it is. You know, if you read anything uh, uh, from Gibbons, you you know in the rise, what is it, the rise and fall of the, uh, or decline and fall of the Roman Empire, in that, what was the last step? Do you remember, Pat? Not right offhand. Okay, no. right, the, the last step, they destroy uh, Rome, and nobody wants to work for anything anymore, okay? Mm-hmm. They're just Romans. They just, they don't want to work for anything. Does that sound familiar? So what do they do? In the last, um, the last nail in the coffin of Rome, they opened up the borders, and anyone could come in, and there mm. wasn't enough to hold the Roman way of life up because all the barbarians came in, and they were against Rome, and they just they just destroyed the culture, and it was over that's exactly what the left is doing to our nation they are destroying our culture they are destroying they intentionally are tra- they state it they are trying to destroy destroy our history our culture the uh, nuclear family the the mm-hmm. um, uh, constitution uh, your sense of right and wrong. We told you about the invasion into our heads of of the normalization of pedophilia. All of this stuff is happening, and it's all coming from one source. And the problem here is, is there is there's no police to watch. The police are under attack. The police can't do anything. And who are you really going to call? Are you going to call the federal government for help? Are you going to call the feds? Do you trust the feds? Let me just say, there are two Americas. There is the America that I grew up in where there is consequence, where if you're, you're breaking the law, you have an equal chance of going to jail as the poor guy who's breaking the law. If you're breaking the law and you're a nobody, you're going to get the same sentence as the guy who is somebody. But that doesn't happen anymore. The DOJ just announced that they would not open investigations into Andrew Cuomo of New York, Gretchen Whitmer of Michigan, Tom Wolf of Pennsylvania, over compelling nursing homes to accept COVID-19 patients. They Mm. killed people. They said, nope, you know, we, um, we requested data from New York and all of these, but, you know, uh, we're not going to pursue that. Even though the Republicans are saying, could you please pursue this? The Justice Department is saying no. By the way, if you commit treason, remember, 
The press is calling white people. The press is calling uh, the people on uh, January 6th more than just criminals. They're calling it treason. Treason. That carries, that is the only thing in the Constitution that has an actual sentence. If you commit treason, it is the death penalty. Constitutionally, you can murder somebody and there's no penalty in the Constitution. It's up to the states. Uh, when it comes to treason, it's death. So they're, call, they're calling us uh, traitors to our country. Really. The spies, the spies that are going into our universities and stealing our tech, stealing all of our intellectual uh, uh, IP, going in and actually spying on our military for the Chinese, Chinese military operatives stealing things from our country. They were caught. The Justice Department under Biden decided, you know what, we're not going to prosecute. How about Joe Biden? <laughs> And his son, Hunter. Nope. Nope. The press wouldn't even report on it. They wouldn't even report on it. Now they barely report on it. How come How come nobody's going after Joe Biden's son? How come nobody's interested in that? But by God, if I did anything, you did anything, anything like that, you'd be run out of... You, if you just had the pictures that we have seen with him with, shall we say, younger looking people or uh, going over to Asia and having sex with uh, people that don't look to be his age, let's say. If you said all the vile things he has said about women, you'd be run out of the, of the country. But if you're Andrew Cuomo, if you're Hunter Biden, it's totally fine. Totally fine. 400 people have been arrested in connection with the Capitol riot. This is the largest or at least one of the largest mass prosecutions in the history of the Justice Department. Can you name one that's bigger than this? 400 people. Lawyers for the defendants say their clients have been beaten by jail guards, held in solitary confinement for 23 hours a day, being held for months at a time without any court date, including those who have not been accused of violent crimes. There are two Americas. There are two Americas. I want to show you where it starts to get really scary and where we're headed unless we begin to unite and stand together in peace. We must model Martin Luther King. We must. And any act of violence, will only, they will only use. I mean, we don't even have to commit it. Here's a guy who is clearly an environmentalist lefty who's out of his mind, kills 22 people, and they're using that to come after conservatives because we're white supremacists, you know.